Hi everyone, welcome to this week's episode. Today we have something for you that is a little different to our usual sailing content. As you can see, I'm not on a boat. I'm actually in South Australia. This is the beautiful beach at Port Elliot, which is one of our southern seaside towns. It's gorgeous, but that's not why we're here today. I'm here today to tell you what is coming up in this week's episode. As a lot of you know, while we were here in Australia this year, we weren't sailing the whole time. We were sailing a lot of the time, but not the entire time. And while we weren't sailing, we were seeing family, we were spending time with friends. But we're also doing some traveling around Australia for the first time ever actually because often while we're here it's really about spending time with family and friends. So we had a little bit more time to spare this visit and every now and again when we were traveling around we took our camera with us. So this episode is just showing you a little bit of our travels throughout Australia. We've had a few little adventures uh, that we wanted to share with you. I hope you guys enjoy this episode. We are going to kick off with the other side of the country, up north, many thousands of kilometers away from here in northern Queensland. And actually, we are going to rewind to the morning of my birthday. So, we're in an Airbnb, and there's like a cassowary with her two chicks that live nearby and we've been left bananas to feed them. So I have to like give them the bananas. Hello. All right, I don't want you to pet me. I need to, ah. All right, ready? So beautiful. That mummy cassowary is like stunning, huge, very beautiful creature. And her little chicks make the cutest noise. It's my breakfast. Well, look, why don't you sit in that director's chair? to um, go exploring on this amazing property in the middle of the rainforest in far north Queensland. So yeah, we're not on a boat today. We are exploring the rainforest. I feel like we're in the middle of nowhere. We're kind of in the middle of nowhere. We're staying at an amazing Airbnb, a birthday treat from myself to myself for my birthday. And we're gonna go and check out the property slash the national park because the property backs onto the national park. What do we have on our feet this time that everyone um, told us to do? Actual sand shoes, so no walking around in thongs today. Okay, we're going to go, there's a couple of creeks, there's some swimming holes, there's some hiking trails. We're just going to go exploring. So we're near the second creek now. Apparently there's like a swimming hole that, yeah, I think that if we go upstream, I'm not actually entirely sure, I can't quite remember the instructions. And I'm determined to go for a refreshing dip in clear, fresh water in a creek, in our own private creek, no less. Okay, we're here. All right, so we found the swimming hole. How nice does that look? I'll bet this water is icy cold, babe. Why would it be icy cold? Queensland. It's Queensland. <laughs> I don't know. I think it might be cold, but I do not no, know right. for sure. Thank you. Yes. Good. Good. Good, okay. Nick forgot his swimming costume.
So one thing that we are just going to do tonight is go and have beer. Beer and a bit of guitar playing by the fire, by the river, which is pretty idyllic and honestly, you know, we've got to get a fire going first. Drink some beers, have a birthday celebration with Therese so that she won't forget that one and um, bang out some tunes. Well, we've rescued a coconut off the tree, or an old coconut. Coconut huskies are like a really, really good kindling. I'll dry this out and then I've kind of got my kindling into different piles. No, because otherwise what happens is you have the wrong size piles and you don't, if you miss one of the stages out, the fire won't set. But obviously people, mountain men and mountain women will tell me that I'm doing something wrong, possibly. <laughs> I don't know, you made a fair few fires in your time, babe, haven't you? Yeah. So we found this little spot by the creek today and uh, there's some firewood up near the house and we thought, let's have an evening by the fire. So Nick's just going to collect the firewood and I have a glass of wine, I have my dip and crackers. Nick's got his beer and his guitar. And have a nice evening next to the fire. Now how happy are you that you get to build a fire and also be next to the private creek and also you're in a rainforest? And also cheese dip. <laughs> and also beer. And my guitar. Yeah, pretty damn happy. I'm a man of simple taste as long as I've got a fire, a creek, a rainforest. <laughs> Is some pencil metal or something? There's a little bit of accelerant applied to the... I, I soaked some of that coconut rush. Nice fire, babe. Alright, cheers, baby. sailing the Sundays, we were saying how we were surprised it wasn't more tropical because it was so far north yeah we're definitely in the tropics beautiful rainforests just like absolutely stunning national parks and waterfalls and it's just so so beautiful yeah I always think of even like Australia is my own country but I always think of Australia as being like quite dry lots of gum trees lots of desert but this is the other side to Australia you know, tropical rainforest. We have it all. We really do have it all. Time in tropical North Queensland came to an end and we made our way back down south towards my family. On the way we made several stopovers to enjoy the beautiful Aussie scenery and local wildlife and yes I can confirm that koalas really are as cuddly as they look. On our last stop before we reached Melbourne, we stayed at this amazing farm overlooking Lake Jindabyne and we couldn't help getting our cameras out once again and filming our time there. Hey, handsome boy. Do you want something from me? I made an old man. Story. I know he loves it. Oh, 
What is this you're scoffing, eh? With your little butt head. Eh? <laughs> Don't you ram me. He's like a cat. <laughs> like a cat. Like a bit. Yes, <laughs> Why are the pigs and the chickens all hanging out, do you think? <laughs> Sound a lot like you sleeping. <laughs> That's definitely not true. <laughs> There's a view you could just never get tired of. Pretty special, isn't it? It's just nuts. Like literally, if, if this was like a, some CGI shot from Peter Jackson as the kind of the way to the Shire, it's true, isn't it? Yeah. You can see the rain over there between those valleys, the sun over there in that valley. We are in uh, Jindabyne, which is just on the edge of Kosciuszko National Park. Mount Kosciuszko is our tallest mountain here in Australia, which is probably not very tall <laughs> compared to a lot of other very, very um, high peaks in the world. But uh, yeah, is is all we got. So this is where actually our skiing fields are over winter. And even now, it's uh, it's March and it's pretty chilly, but absolutely breathtaking. I mean, we're at an Airbnb, and uh, you know, I tell you what, they get to enjoy this view every single day, and it's just the most magical thing. It's it's stunning, it's spectacular. Words can't do it justice. So that is the end of our Australia series. We are now in South Australia, just at the coast, as you can see, for Christmas. Um, honestly, this year in Australia has been superb. I have seen so much of this country, this island, this continent state. Thank you to everyone in Australia that has made my time and our time so special. Yeah. So, all the sailors that have stopped by, everyone that's kind of said you want to come for a beer, all the beers we've drunk, <laughs> but a lot of the people that helped us to kind of like to get on the water. So a big thanks to Brent actually, a big thanks to Phil and uh, to Pete and their boats have really made our series. So thank you to those three. We will be indebted to you beer wise for a very, very long time. So moving forward, Therese, what do we have planned for 2022? Well, it's going to be an absolutely massive year. We're not going to share everything with you right now because there's still a lot to be finalised. But um, immediately we are heading to Vietnam early 2022 to film the build of Ruby Rose 2. And we are, I mean, we have been waiting for this all year, actually. We've been trying to get into Vietnam for months um, because of COVID, obviously, that's been delayed massively. And now we're kind of hoping that it's, it's imminent. But in the meantime, we have an awesome mini series for you that I think you are going to absolutely love. Yeah. We have had so many people ask us for this type of content and we've finally been able to provide it for you. So Nick, why don't you tell everyone what's coming up? Yeah, so I'll be taking a roll of glad wrap or cling film <laughs> and wrapping myself in it and parading naked around. That's the mint, no. Um, <laughs> God. No, um, I just had a lovely mental image in my head. It's a beautiful mental image. Yeah. All right. So look, um, as you know, we sailed Ruby Rose for seven years and monohull sailors before that with two previous boats. We had a 32 footer and then my starter boat, which was a 25 footer. So we have had a lot, a lot of uh, questions asking about monohulls and monohull design. So back in September, I went to the Southampton Boat Show and I went to review a whole raft of different monohulls, similar to the Cataran reviews that we did back in 2019. But this is with the difference. We don't have an eye to what, what monohull we're going to buy, but we do know a lot about sizes, what size would suit you for a family of two, what size would suit you for a family of two plus two. And we've dealt with different types of, of monohulls. So for instance, the, the cruiser, the out and out cruiser, the budget cruiser, the cruiser racer the outright racer, the classic design, the super luxurious yacht, the deck saloon. And by looking at all these, it gives you a good idea of what may suit you. For instance, we looked at some very, very high-end oysters, like the, you know, that are up at the kind of three, four million dollar mark. And we looked at the budget cruisers that were maybe like a hundred thousand dollar mark 
And then the bits in between the classics, like the Rustlers, the Halberg Rassies, the kind of like the Scandinavia lock yachts to take you around the world. We've got the Deck Saloon. So it's gonna be a, a whole kind of like a meandering foray <laughs> into monohull design, but it, there are also some glorious high definition walkthroughs just to kind of like make you salivate if that sort of boat porn is, into, is the thing that you're into. That series is coming up shortly. We have Technical Tuesdays making a massive resurgence. It's gonna be like, you know, coming from fifth place in a, in a Formula One race uh, and stealing it from uh, Lewis Hamilton at the very end. Um, too soon, maybe. <laughs> very too soon. Yeah, still saw that, that one. But, but there's, because we are going to Vietnam and we've got the whole build coming up, there is just a, 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 just a cornucopia, a smorgasbord, a Scandinavian buffet of, of of topics that we can cover about the whole build of Ruby Rose 2. So, Nick is very excited, as you so can yes. see. So, yes. um, we will hopefully be in Vietnam within the next, let's say, six weeks. A little push, fingers crossed. We are still waiting on visas, but we will get that addressed. Yep. And look, happy Christmas, happy New Year. Like, I hope that all your families are safe, happy, secure, full of turkey or whatever. <laughs> non-meat product that you decided to eat for Christmas. You know that we don't have turkey here in Australia for Christmas. God damn it. It's going to be like hot and sunny and we're going to be having like seafood and salads and swims down the beach. Right, turkey for me. <laughs> okay, listen, happy Christmas everyone and we'll see you in the new year. Goodbye. Goodbye.